When we landed on the moon, there was a, around that crater above where we landed, uh, there were multiple ET craft that were just hovering there watching. Here, here's a you know, you know, 101 lesson on classified projects. It doesn't really matter if you have a top secret clearance. It's what compartment you're read into mm. or briefed in. Mm. Read into is the proper military Got term. It, okay. Okay. But, you know, so you may have a top secret clearance and you may be the director of the CIA, but if they don't want you to know what's going on in a USAP, an unacknowledged mm -hmm. special access project, unacknowledged ones are the most tightly held ones and they're actually illegal so there's a constitutional attorney i'm working with uh, too in fact um danny sheehan who did the pentagon papers and, oh yeah um, you have a ron contra and all that he's on my team and another guy named uh larry clayton who is the other side more uh, conservative and we're you know looking at at the the legalities of this so in the n late 90s uh, I wrote to every agency in the government and said, look, we have hundreds of these guys coming forward. Uh, I did a briefing for the president and CIA director back then, Clinton, and his first CIA director, R. James Woolsey, and then started doing briefings for people like General Hughes, who was the head of the Defense Intelligence Agency, and Admiral Wilson, who was the head of the J-2, head of intelligence joint staff. All those people had been denied access to these projects mm -hmm. illegally. So I said, well, guess what? Since these projects are illegal, you can't enforce the, their non-disclosure agreements and their national security oath. So we're vitiating them. We're nullifying them. Bye. Mm. So I wrote a letter that basically said, you have to contact us within 30 days or we're going to start releasing those documents and the testimony of these whistleblowers. So we started doing that. And that project started in 01, 2001. About 800 million people saw the National Press Club event that we did. Um, the agency contacted a lot of major media and ordered it taken down. But before they could, about 800 million people saw it. So that's what I'm working on. So but the, the fact is the technologies that are behind, you know, a UFO, there's this like, forget the word UFO. It's an alternative energy and propulsion device. Some are interstellar and some are man-made. Lockheed Skunk works out here in California. North huge Drummond. Huge program. Huge program. Yeah. I know you've been Sponsored you know, for the stealth fighter. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, you too. Like the, yeah. you know, the band U2, yeah. the, that was, uh, that was a lot of the Works project. Yeah. yeah. So it's huge. So what we decided to do is, is move this stuff forward with the objective of educating the public on the issue, but also getting these technologies uh, known about and, and at some point put into place because you know, our civilizations go going to hell in a handbasket real fast, frankly. Mm -hmm. But these sciences and technologies that have been ruthlessly classified and legal, lethal force has been used to keep it that way, those technologies would completely reverse that. Here, here we are. Here, 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 here. Here. Do you, want, you want some actionable intelligence yes. yeah, instead yeah. of nonsense? Let's get into it. Please, All the right, beans. so you want the area of Kahoot Mesa and Groom Lake mm -hmm. out there, yep. and S4, S2, S4, yeah. S9, and S12. Okay. So but the places that deal with this issue are deep underground, they're hardened, which means you could drop a tactical nuclear weapon on them, you won't you reach the door, yet. yes, wow. correct. Damn. I, you know, I've been out there, and, and I have people who've worked in those facilities, so, you know, the idea that you're gonna, you know, march in there and grab this stuff out with the radar of most people in government. You know, when people say, the government's hiding something, I say, the government couldn't find their ass in a well-lighted room with both hands. I get it. I mean, yeah. you know, seriously, most of the senators, <laughs> kind of congressmen, other people I've met with, cabinet-level folks, they know nothing about this stuff. There are all these stereotypes of this, you know, it's like the big bug-eyed thing. But that's not what it is. That, that's just all the caricatures that, you know, yeah, media it, idiots put out, media, you know, the mass yes. media put yeah. out to sort of ridicule it. Um, but, uh, you know, when I, you know, to get back to your question, when I started this project in 1990, it was really for people to do what's called close encounters of the fifth kind, which is when humans initiate the contact. Mm. And within a couple of years, we had four of these ET craft pop in near Pensacola, and it was on the front page of the paper. And that what they were saying, they weren't a threat. They were saying, look, don't bl blow up this beautiful planet, but if you do a mutual assured destruction all out launch, we can take a lot of them offline so the earth isn't destroyed. That's why they're here. Wow. They're here to sort of be a check to the madness of what's been going on for 70 years on this planet. All right, so the technologies that are really advanced have been all classified. And, and our, I call this the lost century. There's a hundred years of development of our civilization that's been stolen from us. That there's a group of people 
who control this issue that are trying to uh, sort of urgent provocateur to provoke an interplanetary incident. So we'll, the next war, World War III, will be interplanetary. And there, if there is a serious group of nut jobs, and they have to be put on a leash and stood down fast and quickly. And the trigger, when unacknowledged hit hundreds of millions of people seeing it, this group started releasing stuff to the CNN and Washington Post and New York Times under cover of a group that from a, a, a man, a boy that I used to teach on this named Tom DeLong, the Blink-22 guy. Oh yeah, he's and, so and, it's huge on the Okay, answer. but what happened is that his interest got hijacked by militarists whose the, every bit of information they're putting out has to spin. It's a threat to the national security. Our sovereignty has been invaded. It's the kind of brainwashing that's already started to try to convince the public there is as, as an alien threat. You know, Werner von Braun, who invented the rocket yeah. for Adolf Hitler, on his deathbed, he, he said a, to a member of my team who is, who is his right-hand assistant and spokesperson for the last few years of his life said, they're going to hoax an alien threat, I'm quoting, and it's all a lie. So we are actually in the last year at the point where they've started on that plan. Well, and that's that why through, we're doing this next this, this next documentary. Is that through we, movies? We have got to intercept this plan and stop it. Or if you think 9-11 and the Iraq war was a cluster, this is going to be that a thousand times worse. So, and I'm telling you, I'm not trying to scare people, but you know, the future of what we're going to do and have on this plan is hanging in the balance and we're going to have to wake up. Hollywood. It's more like you ever see the movie Independence Day? Of course. Yeah. That was it right out of central scripting from the CIA because I mean, you know, let's unite the world around an alien threat. Go, go, go Google the Ronald Reagan's address to the United Nations when he said, and I'm paraphrasing, he said, wouldn't my, our job of creating a world peace and unity be easier if we had a common alien threat? Yeah, well, that's, you know, all the movies in Hollywood is like, scary, scary. Let's kill hey, it. You know, you know, you want to know what's scary? Go look in the mirror, what humans are doing to this planet and have done to each other for the last few thousand years, you know, and now we have the ability to destroy all life on Earth. Yeah. I, my own take on this is that these civilizations, <laughs> you know, think that we, we're, we're, we've all, we're off our rockers right. and uh, we're an existential threat to ourselves and to others, perhaps. So. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there's any evidence at all that they're anything to worry about in terms of frightened, being frightened. So I always tell people, you know, we're, we're, we tend to project onto others what, the, the, our own garbage, right? So I think what, pe what people are doing by all this fear-mongering stuff, they're projecting our own baggage on these other civilizations, when in reality I think these other civilizations have gone this way before us, have survived the technological point where you, you know, figure out how to create a, a, a nuclear weapon and have survived that psychologically, spiritually, however we want to look at it, socially. We haven't quite gotten there yet, and that's the big challenge of our time. Can we yeah. become a peaceful, a global, and interplanetary civilization or not? Yeah. And, and th th this, is, this is a question to be answered. So it's really a, a macro, it's an economic story and a technological story. I tell you, it's not so much about ETs or aliens, it's more about us. Why are we lying to each other? Well, because there are very powerful people. And I'm not talking about the 1%. I'm talking about the 0.0000001%. You know, if you've got $100 billion like Jeff Bezos, no one gives a flying whatever. There's 2.3 trillion, with a T, dollars missing out of the Department of Defense budget. Unaccounted for, that's how he words it. Where has that been going? It's yeah. going into these unacknowledged projects. Yeah. Unacknowledged means so deep black that even the, I mean, I briefed the, the, the Admiral who was the head of intelligence for the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and then later the director of the Defense Intelligence Agency and the CIA director, personally, sitting like this. None of those men had been briefed on these projects, and when they asked about them, they're told, you don't have a need to know. I would come in with top secret documents that were not declassified that I have. The reason I'm not in prison is that those documents have come out of illegal projects and so they can't prosecute me. Mm -hmm. If the underlying project's illegal, they can't prosecute me, I can prove it. This is why I'm not in prison. I should be in federal prison. If I was releasing information that was being run legally in a secret program, just a normal top secret program, I'd be gone. The things that people are seeing that they assume are alien uh, are in fact uh, counterintelligence operations designed to scare people to death. And they don't have to do that very often. 
to get a buzz created, a zeitgeist guy. And so when you talk about being skeptical, when I first entered into this research, I just assumed those things were legit too. And then I started meeting people who were in these unacknowledged projects who were actually abducting things and uh, people and creating uh, these mutilation events with cattle and horses and other uh, animals. And it was 100% human. And I went, what in the world? I had a guy at the agent CIA tell me, he said, you know, the truth is much more bizarre than the fiction everyone's believing. Yeah. And if you tell people the truth, they won't believe it because they've been brainwashed to believe the fiction. It's opening our eyes to it. And the biggest secret in the CIA, I'll tell you this, it's not the UFO and ET stuff. It's the science of consciousness. It's how mind and thought can interface with matter, this sort of stuff. It sounds very science fiction-y, but it isn't. I mean, it's a legitimate area of scientific study.